Hey, Rick, you know what's awesome? What's that, Billy? Physical media and streaming and being able to get movies just kind of out of the atmosphere whenever you want to watch them. Laser disc. <laughs> <laughs> Beta. <laughs> All right. So we started talking in the last show about, you know, different different studios versions of DVDs and VHSs and then CDs and movies and music and the whole works. So we can talk about the artists whose music and movies and stuff is actually on these different media forms. But, you know, Rick and I have talked about there's, there's, there's times when just like going and buying a CD, like standing in line to go buy a record. Uh, my dad would tell me the story of like when the Beatles record came, you know, like when Hey Jude, or not Hey Jude, but Sgt. Peppers came out. You know, there was just lines up the oh, block yeah. of people going to buy that record. And, you know, they didn't have decks in their car to play the record. You know, like you had to buy the record and then drive home and like put it on, right. your, on your player. You know, but it was a it was a it was a cultural moment. It was a big deal, and I remember when records would come out. You know, it's like I want one of the, like well, one of the, one of the least awesome ones ever was like Metallica's Load. It's like me and my buddy went and bought the, we both bought a copy, and he tore it open and threw it in a CD player. We were driving home, and like I was like, "Take me back! I'm returning this." <laughs> it was the steal. I was like, "This has got to be a joke. Like it sucks." Um, so. <laughs> Somebody put uh, and, your and, silver and chair like, in my Metallica album. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, but I mean, I remember for Christmas when I was a kid, um, my, my uncle had a double deck tape recorder. So he'd go and like my cousin would buy a tape and they'd go and this, this is awesome. In fact, I really wish I had this copy because the, the, the CD, the, the, the album was Bon Jovi's New Jersey. Yep. It was the new one after uh, Slippery and Wet. Yep. But he went and on like on hi-fi, like super quality tapes, recorded a, a, a dubbed copy of that record and then um, popped the tabs out so you couldn't record over it. <laughs> and then they went down to the, the little photocopier place in the mall and like actually copied the, the, the jacket. So whenever it was, a, it was a complete bootleg of the of the tape. Only the tape itself I think was was white. Or it had the printed names of the songs on it. And this one was just like a Magnavox. But, dude, it was awesome because it sounded good. And I liked that record. And, I mean, I didn't know I would like the record until I got it for Christmas. But it was still pretty rad, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> but physical media, man, there's bootleggers out there. There's collectors out there. There's there's old VHS. There's, there's like, it's just, it, I mean, it's a whole world. So, I know, you, like you said, if the phone turned around, you'd have a collection. If I know I've seen Ricky's collection. That's only part of it. So yeah. what's your, what, what's your, I mean, not necessarily your go-to because there's a, there's a lot of different reasons that you would go for one over the other on a same day, but like media, physical media, you know, VHS, DVD, streaming, CD, cassette, eight track, reel to reel, you know, it's like <laughs> if if you had if you had all of the things, all of the elements that you could put together, you know, what's your what's your favorite? What do you wish? What do you miss? What do we wish, wish we could go back to? What are we what are we glad we're done with? That's just kind of gone. And let's roll from there. Yeah. Cool. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, Ry. OK. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I could go off on a full tangent on this. I, I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know, man. It's it's a crazy thing because, you know, albeit with, like, streaming, it can be, like, a severely good thing for, like, say, new generations. But, and even though I'm not really that old, I, I mean, hell, I'll be 33 in September, next September. I'm just more old school and maybe it was because I, I grew up that way, but I've gotten to the point where not only has my collection itself like gotten so big, like what uh, Billy's saying, I'll, I'll be out at like Goodwill, pawn shops, yard sales, you name it. And if I feel like it's a, a little gem, 
like you know like you're saying it's something about a new smell of a new movie or a, a soundtrack you name it i'm getting to that point where especially if it's movies i really love like if i love the soundtracks i i want all the editions of the soundtracks vinyl cd however i can get it i'm i'm just i've gotten to be like a true true collector and i mean like i was saying streaming can be so good it can be convenient it can be maybe sometimes a little cheaper but on the other hand of it, it it's like you, you do miss the days of old where you know i i feel like we're the, the newer generations are getting away from that where it's like the the feel and the the new smell of that item that you just bought you know the linear notes you, you name it you know what i mean it's i don't yeah. know you guys want to expand on it i mean that's how but, i feel like it, but to me I'm, the the, th the thing about nowadays is you're not invested right it, it, billy just nailed it while ago when you stood in line and you waited on an album and you bought it at that point you have invested whereas nowadays you turn a movie on Netflix, you watch it for five, 10 minutes. If you don't like it, you just turn it off. Whereas back All in right. the day, you pick, you stood there in a video store for two hours picking out a movie. And when you got it home, it didn't matter if it sucked or not. You were watching it because you're invested. <laughs> right. Well, I think that's going to be much more true in music. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but music, because I've never had a problem like turning off a movie I didn't like. You know, it's like, eh. <laughs> Like what's weird is like I would force myself to read a 400 page book because certainly whoever put the time and the effort into writing a 400 page book and whoever took the time to publish it, there's got, it's gotta get good at some point. Right? <laughs> like it can't thoroughly <laughs> suck. With, with it's a movie, like a movie. But with, yeah, with it's a like, movie though, there's tastes and stuff. You know, like what, but with music, like again, with my dad's vinyl collection, like I was an album rock guy. So yeah, you had the hit, but then I was, I was raised, I wasn't raised to believe it like Amish or something, but I, I like, I was told this many times where it's like, you had the hit that often was the hook to buy the record, but all the good stuff is on the record. Yeah. And, and so like deep tracks and B sides and, you know, and, and I'm not even yeah. trying to be like, whoa, I'm an alternative guy. I'm talking like on, 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 are you experienced and and sergeant pepper and like these huge right. records that that you know they have the the couple of hits that you've heard which is not diminishing the quality of the hits but then whenever you get past them then you've got like some six minute instrumental interlude interlude that is just life-changing you know what i right. mean like those sorts of things or like the obscure pink floyd stuff that's just like entire records with like six words on them and you're like how did, how did this ever get past the gatekeepers but yeah <laughs> you know the, but there, there's so much buried gold that a lot of times i think on streaming and spotify or whatever they they scoop all of that out and they take all the, the quote unquote the best songs from all right, the right. different thousands and thousands of artists and they gonculate them together and so you have you know a few songs here and there and they're all good but you're missing so much more that's yeah, right. that's that's on there yeah. well and I, that's go ahead right okay i just think that's a perfect segue into like what i always talk about especially with newer music i mean like you're saying with older music it's it's much different because like there was more quality there it seemed it was pure raw talent it's just different to me in my mind and my in my heart but uh these days i disagree i mean the music the music industry has been a crappy date from the beginning like they're they're only out for the money it just kind of came from a like well used to you had a little more freedom to well a great example going back to look at uh from about 77 and up with Queen, right? They had this mentality of, here's your radio friendly songs to satisfy the record company. Now the rest of the album is ours. Well, you know? and that, I mean, that, I, feel, I feel like it's, it's that much more to, to piggyback off that. 
I mean, you can disagree or agree, whichever, you know, I know a lot of people disagree because there's always the argument that, oh, well, you're wrong because there's a bunch of great music today. And there is, don't get me wrong. But yeah. to me, it's always going to be different. Like the quality of music you look 50s, 60s, 70s, up until the 90s and 2000s, it's drastically changed. I mean, that's personally just how I feel. But to piggyback off that, what you're saying, I feel like it's it's been that way much more these days yeah. in the decades gone by, force feeding you and shoving it down your throat. These are the hits you should like. But you, yeah. you go and buy the album. I remember going out like Tuesdays or whenever the, the new album would release. And you go and buy it solely based off that one or two songs on the radio. And on average, more often than not, the rest of the album would suck. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's what I was saying is the, the music industry hasn't hasn't changed much since Buddy Holly. Because Buddy Holly used to get in yeah. fights with the music industry and they're like, hey, you need to write the songs we want. You need to play the songs we tell you to play. And Buddy Holly told him to go jump in a lake but buddy holly songs sold so he earned himself that cred right but for everybody holly for every queen there's thousands of other bands that just sign on the line and do what they're told there's that whole movie right. the, the wonders with tom hanks it's like he's like that's pretty much the story like they were doing christmas albums and they're doing all this different stuff back in the 60s now they had fender twin amps and they had you know, high quality instruments and they had different, different things. And again, the musicians didn't have YouTube or tabs to teach them to play. So they were pretty dedicated musicians. You've done like, you didn't have guys like me that just mess around with power chords for 20 years. <laughs> you, know, like, you, you had, you know, like some pretty professional guys and, and stuff. Um, I mean, things like going way off the rails because quality is quality. I mean, if you have somebody who's like, you know, just take somebody like Taylor Swift, you know, like lover or hater, the chick can play and she can sing. That would, yeah. May, maybe don't like what she's singing about. Maybe don't like how she's singing it or how she's playing it. But there's no doubt that when somebody tells her to flat a fifth, she's doing it because yeah. she's a pro. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and, and and I can respect that in a lot of ways. I just feel like I don't know. It's a hard thing to put into words because, much like you guys, I feel I feel so strongly about music. I just feel like the business, because music, much like movies, it's all a business. The business side of it, to me, has only gotten progressively worse. The devil's not trying to buy the souls anymore. Right. <laughs> he's not. He's not down at the crossroads, but like, like looking for the good guys. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he's, just, he's living in the auto tune. <laughs> the, the talent side of it has completely changed for me. I, that's just how I feel personally. I mean, you can uh, look at it all. I think it's do too. It, it's it's all about what you're what you what you like, right? Again, it kind of goes back to that thing of you know, <laughs> I'm a seventies and eighties guy, and I don't find myself listening to anything current because I'd right. rather listen to the old stuff. So I mean. Right. So that's that uh, that's that old man bantha, right? That that you have there about that kind of stuff. But you know, there's still some talent out there. It's just I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely, and that's, that's fair. the truth. You know, you know? It, it is it, truth is truth. But I don't know. It's just something about maybe it's because I'm biased, like you said. But you, in the days of old, I mean, I sound like I'm 50 or 60, but hey, watch of, it now. Yeah, yeah. In the days of old, it, it's like a dude would get up there with nothing but a dang guitar and pour his ever-loving heart and soul out. And I'm not saying that some don't do that nowadays, but it's just not the same. Where, in, you know, in the past, it's like all it took, take Stevie, for example. You know, a lot, a lot of people still don't know who he is or sometimes even hate on him you know, because they're not in the blues or what's popular. But, you know, he he was such a raw talent, and he put everything he had and more. He slept, ate, breathed, and bled that guitar. And we do not get that nowadays. We just don't. But Well, it, it's it's the pop machine, right? You can never confuse Stevie Ray Vaughan with being a pop star. Mm -hmm. 
and the pop star gets bigger and bigger. That's the reason we have Cardi B having the number one song in the country, you know, and you're going, how does that happen? You know, right. well, it's, it's because she's popular for the wrong reasons. Mm-hmm. Right. And, well, and there's, I mean, there's always, sorry folks, if you're fans of Cardi B, I'm sorry, but come on, it, it is what it is, you know. <laughs> no, she's, we're not sorry. A, <laughs> no, not, not sorry. You know, <laughs> so <laughs> to, to Rai's argument, it is more processed nowadays. So you don't have to have, okay, Elvis was the, the perfect package, right? He had the Thank looks, you. he had the stage presence, he had the, the charisma, he had the talent. Nowadays, you only have to have right. one or two of those. Yeah, and and mainly, mainly it's the look. If you've got the look, they'll manufacture the rest of it, right? Of course. Right. And I'm a big so, Elvis fan, so, I mean, I'm, I'm with you there. Hey, he's the king, man. I mean, oh, I like uh, to me. Uh, you know, I don't like to beat up genres because I, I think, I think everything's got its place, right? I think there's your virtuosos, your Ingves, and all these guys going back to classical, right. neoclassical. You got your Stevie Ray with the blue stuff. You got your punk bands, and it's, it's all relative to the thing. I think you and I are on the same level here because it's, and I think we all are. You like it when it's true, mm-hmm. even if it's not good. If it's true to who they are, and that's uh, why I've always had it. That's why I've always had a trouble with a lot of country stuff because every country star that I know of wants to be a rock and roll guy. Well, and that's well, that's what <laughs> I was funny because I was a I was a gathering the other day and they were putting you know they had the little Bluetooth speaker and they're putting on country and it was old country. Uh, it was yeah. you know Hank Williams and Waylon and sure. stuff. And I want to like I don't want to go way weeds because we are actually talking about different kinds of media, but. To, to hit, <laughs> hit a couple of things real quick. Um, grew up old country, you know, yep. but you mentioned Elvis and I wasn't talking about this or that. I was saying that the music industry has always been a crappy date. Elvis, the king Even of rock Elvis. and roll, the first rock and roll star got completely chewed up and spit out and yep. You know, he, he's he's the first rock star. He's also the first rock tragedy. Even though there was yeah. other rock stars that died before he did, but since he was he was at this end of things, like there wasn't yeah. rock and roll, then there was, and there was Elvis, and Elvis died a rock star's death, which has right. become all too common. Like yeah. the music industry has always been just looking for that next paycheck, the next paycheck, the next hit, the next hit, the next hit, right. the next record, the next movie, the next you know magazine cover. And, and so, when, if, if, if when you, you can't produce it, it, yeah, if you can't if produce you it, then the clubs, yep, then then you're 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 a slave to the grind. Then you have some people who are transcendent, but even like Queen, they earned their right to yeah. write the, to make the songs they wanted to write. But I would I would uh, argue that the music industry chewed up Freddie Mercury pretty hard too. Sure, they um, did. Yeah. So I mean, even though they some people transcend that that grind doesn't mean that it's very nice so that's that's what i was meaning by that you're yeah, talking right. about country because country's the same thing music industry you know yeah. hank williams died when he's 29 years old i right. mean that's a, that's but, hard to believe when you look at the guy <laughs> like, but but at the same time you, you're making a good point here too because that's real country mm-hmm. right so right, my exactly. problem is is you know what we consider country people now, I mean, you can you can pull up YouTube and Brad Paisley's playing Hot for Teacher. So you're going, well, wait a minute. If right. you took the term to, time to learn Hot for Teacher, you probably want to be more, well, Garth, Garth Brooks is a Garth diehard Brooks Kiss one, fan. Wanted to be Kiss. Yeah. The, what drives me nuts with, with country music more than just about anything else is the fake accents. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's, like, it's like you go you go Beatles, right? They're from Liverpool. Yeah. Working class, you know, yeah, like cold lung sort of deep dark rainy Brits can't listen to them talk and understand what they say, even though they're speaking English, and yet they don't yeah. sing with an accent, <laughs> right? The Scorpions, they're German. They don't even <laughs> they don't even speak English. They sing in English. They don't have an accent. You get some dumbass country singer on the radio right now who's from freaking like. Sacramento going right. they're, 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 they're trying to sound hazy because that sells right. I can't yeah. stand that <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think it all kind of ties in to what we're talking about, whether it's music or media, media of any sort, r- really, you know? I mean, Elvis is the perfect example, like you guys were saying, because, I mean, ever since I was, I don't know, 19, 20, 21, I've, I've been a huge Elvis fan. It's one of my tattoos. I can't say enough about the man like I can't say enough about Stevie, but Elvis to me is the prime example because on one hand you got Colonel Tom Parker, right? Mm -hmm. He's trying to get him out there, get his name out there, sell, sell, sell. But on the other hand, if not in a lot of ways for Colonel Tom Parker, we wouldn't have the Elvis that we know. Right. So it goes, it all goes hand in hand, man. Yep. You know, I got an idea. Make a bunch of movies, Elvis. Yeah. <laughs> right. Hey, some of his movies I like. Not all, obviously, but <laughs> you can't help but love Elvis, man. He just, right. much like Stevie, he just had a huge heart. And what you're saying, Ricky, uh, for me personally, like you said, it's if it doesn't feel real and it's not true and I can't yeah. feel it deep within my soul, then. Now you're gonna have your fun music, right? I mean, admittedly sure. so. Admittedly so. I grew up on what they call butt rock in the early 2000s, right? Yep. My first, my first rock album was Silver Side Up from Nickelback. So I'm as guilty <laughs> as ever. But <clears throat> I mean, well, we like all that hair metal from the 80s. But it's like it's like Ricky was pointing out in in one of our many other podcasts. He's like, you know, when you had. Reagan and Gorbachev and both of them are heading off with fingers on the button and you didn't know if you were going to be alive in a week. The answer, the cultural answer to that was poison. Party. <laughs> yeah. The episode that never was. Um, <laughs> funny story on, on scary dad, Scott and I did this, uh, this episode and like, you, you know, every now and then you do something, it, you know, if you're a musician, you play in a band and every now and then you just have that feeling that, everybody's just firing on all cylinders you're right in the pocket you know it's just like this epic like we're just nailing it and then it the the episode got deleted like it just i could not find it it just went buried itself someplace in my computer and i just lost the hell out of it felt bad man because at the time he was really going through some crap and i'm like dude (laughs) i hate to have to tell you this but that episode just crap the bed it's gone <laughs> and so yeah, being like man we were really solid that night we really need to get re-record that episode we really need to just like do it again like, i don't know if we could do it justice but nobody will have ever heard it so it took us a year or two we finally got back around to it and put it together and it was all right well then one day out of the ether that legendary episode that last that lost concert footage popped up I clicked play. Yeah, we were not in the pocket. (laughs) We we were drunk. (laughs) Sounds about right, man. Sounds about right. (laughs) We had a good time recording it, but this this is almost unlistenable. (laughs) This kind of sucks. (laughs) I mean, I'm sure Ricky could tell you too, you know. I I, I don't know how much both you – I know, you know, Ricky plays a lot, but – yeah, that, that, that's how I felt like a lot of times uh, I, I'd go to, you know, it was just that right moment. I mean, the stars aligned, everything. And I'd go be in jam sessions with my uncle or out and about at a bar or something like that. And uh, I, I would try and upload these audio or video links to Facebook. And most, if not all those, got lost to time. Luckily. I have a bunch of uh, tapes that me and my uncle recorded and transferred it to uh, CDs. And I go back and listen to those all the time. And and even doing that, it's like you can't recreate that magic. No matter how hard you try, it is like everything aligned. All the elements, the atmosphere, whatever was just right. And you you can't recreate that no matter how hard you try. I'll go back and listen to a a million. And it's like, I couldn't do that again if I tried. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I know exactly. I know exactly what you mean. It's kind of like the uh, the the time we went and played at CBGB's, and there's a recording of it out there somewhere. 
and I'd love to get my hands on it because I know it, it turned out really good, but my version of it is kaput. So, <laughs> so I would say cassette was my favorite format, but because of that, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because I think there's that the, we, you know, we got way off earlier. <laughs> And, you know, that's fine. We never start this show with, like, we have an idea of what we want to talk about, but we don't ever have a, a, any place we need to go. Um, like, right. one, once this is all done, once I once I close this, and I hope that the file's in the right folder, then I'm just <laughs> going to bed. And bed's right on the other side of that wall right there. So, I'm <laughs> like, I'm, I ain't driving. I got, I'm like, I'm not doing nothing political. No rallies. <laughs> it's all good. Um, well, so couple of reasons why because you were starting talking about v collecting vhs and it's funny because i've never really been a huge movie guy like i like movies i like watching movies but watch a movie go do something else you know go to the arcade when i'm done right yeah. like i like we talk about the movie we just saw but like it, it never, especially like Lord of the Rings type stuff, where it's like, oh, you've got three additional hours of crap. And it's like, well, you made a two-hour movie. How do you have three additional hours <laughs> that you that you added on to the original two? Like, right. Like, I, I, that's not been something that's ever, you know, it's like Blade Runner. It's like, well, we got 12 seconds of additional footage, so we'll release a new. I'm like, well, dude, like, I probably wasn't paying attention like which you is, play it, play either version, and I wouldn't notice. I mean, which no, is they, actually a, a shot of a unicorn that was used from Legend. So yeah, there yeah, you go. Yeah. That's, that's, thanks for throwing hey. that in there. <laughs> <laughs> but shout out to Legend, man. I mean, I Ricky knows by now, hell. But uh, I, I won't get off on a tangent. But yeah, I, lo I love Legend. But I mean, I know exactly <laughs> what you're saying though, because. But there, well, there are. What I was gonna say is there, there are certain things, and, and so like, my my journey was because you know dad having a reel to reel, yeah, record albums that I would flip. You know the, um, you know the one had some kind of resin. And it was green. I don't know. It could have been just like old Coke that Coca Cola that had gotten dried on there. But who knew? But, you know, it's like played three songs and you had to skip it over to the next three songs and then you, you missed yeah. that middle one. Like, you know, just growing up, like I had records, had high fidelity stereo equipment, had reel to reel, had a tape deck. I was getting bootleg tapes from my aunts and uncles and stuff from different different places. Move into the CD category. CDs are great, right? But... They like everybody else. They lied. Oh, it'll never get like it'll it'll never die. It's like yeah, it will. It smudges like freaking eyeglasses. <laughs> you know? Um, and then let you know, it's like it doesn't really matter unless you're making out, and then all of a sudden the record skips. <laughs> you're just like, oh, my, my sweating palms caused that to happen. So then, <laughs> then, you, then, then, then you get the first iPod, and the iPod's awesome, except for I have a I have a CD player in my in my living room that I bought in 1993. Oh, it's nice. a hundred disc CD player, and it it racks them up vertically like this, <clears throat> and this mofo has a personality, right? <laughs> so I've got everything in there. From Alice in Chains to Sepultura, and then like mellow stuff like Ryan Adams, and you know, it plays something heavy, and you fast forward it, it goes to something light, and you don't touch it, and it'll stay light all day, all day long. And its brain is not a brain, it's a laser and a pulley. Right. But you go to the iPhone and it's like heavy metal, like not in the mood. Okay, here's yeah. um, Neil Diamond. You're like Neil Diamond's cool. They're like, oh, you like that Neil Diamond? Here's more heavy metal. Like, no, not in the mood. Like, oh, here's Billy Joel. 
no, now that you've enjoyed that Billy Joel, hear the Lord, have your little. You're just like, dude, <laughs> stop it. So I realized it took me a long time. And this is how dumb I am. Like, oh, I used to really just enjoy like album rock. I used to just take a record and put it on and play it. And if I wasn't too happy with the middle of the record, that's okay because the end got better. Right. And there's a lot of records out there that I really enjoy beginning to end. I can't yeah. say that I've bought a record, well, other than Gunship, that I've really enjoyed beginning to end in probably 20 years since the, iP- since the iPods came out. Yeah. It's because it's all about the shuffle. The shuffle, the shuffle, you know, the... Yep. the, 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 the right. So then I bought the tape deck that's in my garage. That's a whole different thing was I've, I had this little speaker that I could plug my iPod into, or my iPhone, and it just drove me nuts. I'm out there woodworking, and I'm just like, man, I have to stop, tell this thing to quit every, like, five minutes, because it plays, I like, right now I'm in a heavy metal mood, and now you're playing Neil Diamond, and vice versa. So I started building a Frankenstein <laughs> system. Got a receiver, got a tape deck, got a, got a CD player, got some speakers up in there. It is like 90s fabulous, and it's about half broken. It's awesome. <laughs> now I go to Goodwill, and I find tapes for like 25 cents. I'm like, pop them in there, and it's got that homey hiss. That oh, yeah. You yeah. push it, and it says, and then Eric Clapton starts playing Bell Bottom Blues, and I'm like, you know what? <laughs> nice. This is life. <laughs> this is what I remember from being a kid. This is great. So... <laughs> I, yeah, like no. I don't prefer cassettes, but I prefer cassettes to streaming it, almost like it takes iPod. you. It takes you home though. It takes you home because it does. That's but there's that's a reason. Remember. There's a method to my madness. Like I'm not a hipster. I'm not like I'm going to Urban Outfitters and buying right. buying a tape deck yeah. just to buy a tape. It's more like yeah, eh, you know. Yeah, I mean it, it. It takes you back, but I think we're we're all getting to that point to where it's almost becoming cliche but it's like it's all coming back you know what i mean like vinyl you name it but what you were saying about um you've never really been the type to okay you just average movie goer you just watch a movie and then put it back on the shelf i mean most people are that way but like ever since i was a kid the the more i've grown up it's it's become that way like it's not enough to just watch the movie I got to listen to a podcast on it. I got to break it down. I got to dive into it in the behind the scenes three plus hours. You know <laughs> what I mean? I've just, I've gotten to be more of that type over the years. Like I've just, and it's like the movie side comes from my mom's side. The music side comes from my dad's side. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's all coming back. But I've always been that type to where it, it's just not enough to to watch the movie. Like I, I got to know everything about it. I mean, more especially like say movies that I really love. You know, right. if it's just some, one if, for you. If, you know, I've never actually seen that. <laughs> but you haven't? what? No, I haven't. Hey, check this out. That'll, that'll make I'm, you even happier. I'll, sealed. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot like that, man. You you guys would be surprised that the thing, John Carpenter. He's, I mean, he's my favorite director. I have a lot of, a lot of VHS that are still sealed. Yeah, I got that one as well. I told Scott, I was like, dude, I'm gonna go out to the little show and see if I can oh, get five nice. bucks for that. And he's like, yeah, I might want to look that one up. <laughs> yeah, I mean that that's another topic. Like, especially if they're still, still sealed. There's your and, there's your four hour long versions, Billy. <laughs> oh, hell yeah, Ricky. Hell yeah, dude. dude I have a. Uh, I have. I'm okay with uh, dude. It's one of those things like I'm okay I with it existing. I'm just picking with you, man. <laughs> I'm okay with it existing. I just can't understand how there's more footage on the back end of things than there were in the original releases. It's like well, oh, we got twenty minutes. Same, the, got, <laughs> the, the same thing that we give five row. You know the glory for for being such a a, a fanboy of what he's doing. Well, that's Peter Jackson. He's True. a fanboy. You know. Well, I mean, so. it, it, it and it takes it takes longer to make the actual movie than it does for us to view it. 
you know what I mean? So yeah, not everybody, but a lot of, you know, people out there want to see like, again, take the Scream Factory or the Arrow editions or Criterion. A lot of people want all those goodies with it. Get your bang for your buck. You not only get the movie, but you get a poster double sided. You get lobby cards, you name it. You know, a lot of people want those sort of things. And these companies go out of their way to bust their balls to put in the work, the time and the effort, and the money for like true fans. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I totally get what you're saying too, but uh, everyone's different. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not knocking those, those criterion collection, anything. Cause I do yeah. that with music. Like I said, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't knocking, knocking the, not in any way, dude. Like right. not any way. With I, I specifically landed on Lord of the Rings because I do remember it being funny <laughs> that the yeah. special extended, edition had extended more, cut is yeah, more <laughs> additional than footage <laughs> than was originally yeah. released. So they released a two-hour movie. They had three hours of additional movie, so it was a five-hour movie. <laughs> Instead of a two-hour movie, I'm like, wow, that's that's well, one and a half times more additional stuff than there was original movie. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gotta, just... Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> it is it's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. But you got to think of it like this: think about the stand, right? The stand uh, yeah. is probably yeah. too big to make a movie out of, so you had to break it up. Well, and they just broke up it. Look how they broke up it for two movies, right? Well, the problem is with Lord of the Rings. I even saw a comedian talk about it recently. It's like, well, it's a, uh, it's a movie about walking. <laughs> yeah, it's really long. And it's longer than the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> so Peter Jackson yeah. being a fanboy, he wanted to capture as much of it as possible and in, in film. And then of course you have to cut it back to make it an actual release. And right. Exactly. The rest I mean, of the band, so. yeah, just think if uh, <clears throat> Christmas vacation, I mean, that's a whole topic itself, but take Christmas Vacation, you know, one of your favorite all-time movies. What if they had released, what if it come out now or soon or years later that they discovered that there was, I don't know, 20, 30 more minutes of additional footage that you never knew about that they released and came out with a badass edition of it? You would buy it. I know you would. Right, yeah. exactly. For for movies that you love, and I think that's that's the thing is it's almost getting where it's oversaturated because, let's you know, uh, there's some movies you're like, well, as long as I've just got a decent copy of it, I'm happy. Now there's certain <laughs> things, See, Down the Paradise. Not, well, what I was gonna, where I was going to go with that is because that's where I regressed was because not yeah. because I think tapes are superior to CDs in any way, right, right. But you know, buy a tape at goodwill for 25 cents yeah like i bought eric clapton unplugged for a quarter at goodwill yeah. right it's a great album you've probably only heard a song or two off of it but you put it on there and it's i their critique of the record they expected eric clapton to come in there and play a whole bunch of stripped down versions of his hits he played two yeah. and the rest of it was just acoustic blues but being played on a classical guitar it was kind of a big middle finger to mtv but it was fun and it's really good right <laughs> it's, um but it's on tape i could have bought i've had that cd i had that cd when i was younger it it but i've got a tape deck um now i bought the the um the dock in with dream warriors on it Again, got it for free at a swap meet. The well, tape. I can't say I can't say that it's you paid for probably what it was worth. So, <laughs> well, the, 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 tape, the tape was stretched, right? So, uh, so like, I got it for free. I got it. I got it at a swap meet. Got it. It was like okay, cool. Put it in there, and it's like okay, here's music, and then it goes. Bruh. I was like, uh oh, tape uh, messed up. Whatever. Yeah. Like. Put in a different tape, test. No, no it's just the, yeah. the tape's messed up. But it's from like 1983 or four or something. Yeah. Well, it's back for the attack. It's 88. Okay, 88. Still, it's, it's original. So yeah. it's 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 beat to hell. But when it came to VHS and horror movies, because like the DVD or the, the digital transfers got, got to the point where kind of remember whenever 
HD TVs came out and you'd buy them oh, yeah. and put them on the wall and everything looked like a soap opera because mm-hmm. you wouldn't, wouldn't go in there and change the settings to put it on like cinema, but it was right. like that, that highly it defined. Would do that, that pan and scan kind of thing that happens. Yeah. yeah. And so like, same thing with, I remember it was, it was Friday the 13th, actually. It was a Friday the 13th part six <laughs> of all funny of all movies. <laughs> of all movies. <laughs> But I remember like getting, borrowing or getting a DVD or watching it on streaming or something. It was on digital on a high def TV. And I'm sitting there watching this movie and being like, okay, those plants are fake. They're plastic. They're prop plants. <laughs> yeah. Um, that guy doesn't look like a monster. He looks like a guy in a rubber suit. Like yeah. everything about this looks, have you seen Wizard of Oz? Like, DVD, up. like high def Wizard of Oz. It's yeah. it's creepier than the original Wizard of Oz because they cleaned it all up and it does look like they're in a plant, like a fake plant store. It's really weird. <laughs> it, is, it is really bizarre. But this is Friday the 13th. And I'm like, okay, so the story is that they're a summer camp and there's a crazy guy running around stabbing people. But what I'm seeing is a guy in a rubber suit walking around a whole bunch of fake, fake plants. <laughs> Well, and Chris, so then I got a VHS of the same movie and I put it in. Right. And I'm like, okay, get the get the grit. Yeah, there's that just bit of fuzz mm-hmm. on like it, it, it's like putting Vaseline on a on a on a camera lens. Yeah, just a little bit of fuzz that 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 separates you from the reality of it. And the now he looks like a monster in yeah. a camp stabbing. Right. 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 So. Hey. I was I went uh, for horror movies. I went back to VHS because just the the, the right. lo-fi of it helps. That, that's that's what I like about the '70s movies because you almost feel like you're watching something that you weren't supposed to see in the first place, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it, well, it especially. Kind of, yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. It's just you know I think of Last House on the Left. Uh, yeah thriller they call her one eye all these things that are super gritty make you feel like you need a shower afterwards but when you clean them up they kind of lose that impact because Mm -hmm. you know uh these movies weren't intended to be seen in high def (laughs) you know (laughs) right yeah i mean exactly that that's the thing about it you know i mean (laughs) i think so many people forget that you used to be able to smoke in theaters (laughs) <laughs> so like you're watching this stuff through a smoke filter too. Right? You used to do a lot of things in a theater. <laughs> you could, yeah, yeah. No, I just, I just think people it's like the dog on Giuliani for being a Trump lap dog, but Giuliani kind of like messed up New York too. There, there used to be uh, the Devil in Miss Jones Part Three, but then they turned it into a Quiznos. <laughs> right. Yep, pretty much. Watch the watch the opening sequence of Night Court. Like here's right. this fan, here here's this fun funny family family comedy about like <laughs> hookers and prostitutes and people <laughs> being brought in to missing court dates and yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean especially seventies movies because that's my. I mean, it's the golden age of cinema. That's my favorite decade of all time of, of films and. <laughs> it's it's like you were saying, Ricky. I mean, you feel like you got a shower afterwards, but they they took <laughs> way more chances and risks back in the oh, yeah. in the seventies. You know what I mean? Like that that is definitively my my all time favorite decade of, of films. But some movies like that, like not all, but I mean, take Last House on the Left. Got the beautiful Arrow edition. Still yeah. haven't dug into it, but. I'm sure that was a movie that was shot. You, you take any movie from the seventies, maybe even Halloween, you know, and, and they weren't thinking in their minds that, Ooh. okay, this is going to be, be a movie that's going to be restored years later. And people are going to see every finite detail. You right. know, some movies, some movies probably even, especially the well, Friday the 13th movies were shot like that, where it was so dark and you didn't even think about it. You know, you, you grew up watching those and it's like, it, I I don't know. It like it was so dark, but now with the new Screen Factory box set, it's so cleaned up and restored. And sometimes I'm of the argument that sometimes it can be 
two cleaned up and two restored. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and I appreciate the effort, like, like Suspiria, right? Yeah. Make, make it stand out because it's that kind of movie, you know, the original Suspiria, but you know, there's a, there's a fine line with it too, man. I mean, you can, you can piss on a Picasso sometimes, right? I mean, exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. For I'm, sure. I'm, and you got to remember, totally... and, and you got to remember too, that these movies was before the VHS boom. So this was a one pass situation, right? right? These movies right. were created for you to come and see them to theater. If you came back to watch it again, fine. But you weren't going to sit it at home and analyze it over and over and over like we do now. Right. So these movies were made to wham, bang, part two's yeah, coming I, out next year, you know? <laughs> slam, bam, thank you, ma'am. Yep. Well, right. sometimes, sometimes, I mean, I don't like it because I am, <laughs> I am something of a perfectionist and a control freak in my in my real life like in 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 podcasting i'm sort of a bootlegger and in guitar playing i'm sort of a a, of a punk rocker but there does come a point where good is good enough right it's like yeah like you say there's not like nobody's going to be sitting here analyzing this you're in 1977 and you're filming a scene and you're like "Eh, you know yeah do, do we want to spend 200 bucks on more film or can this pass? And right. then, you know, 50 years later, some dumbass is being like, they could have shot it better. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, you know? and on the other side is I don't need a 4k re- restoration of don't go in the basement. You know, <laughs> right. I just don't. Exactly. I don't. Right. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm not going to go off on a tangent, but, uh, <laughs> I finally saw that movie, I don't know, a month or so ago. I and again I found I found it at a uh, Goodwill for real cheap and I'm like, you know what? I've always heard about this movie. Let's check it out. It's real cheap. And I watched it and Will Cardinal from the Bay of Blood, uh yeah. he actually really likes it. And and he said, But have you seen the uncut version? <laughs> I said no, I don't think so, and I don't actually know if it'd really make it any better. But um, <laughs> I saw it. I don't think it was the uncut version, but I saw it, and I'm like, dude, really? The only impactful thing about that film is a few key scenes here and there where he captures a girl and takes her. <laughs> really, the ending, the very yeah. end of the movie, because the whole movie is really boring, to be honest. It's very boring. But uh, yeah. yeah, and that was a lot of the seventies too. They 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 lived in that slow burn. You know, you 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 had a idea that in realistic time probably took ten minutes, but you had to build you know the other one hundred and ten minutes of fluff just to make it happen on the screen. So we'll see. And we were talking we we're talking about going back and forth and back and forth, and I think that is <laughs> that that is a that's that's one of those things that's a victim of or a few movies things are victims of that same thing because like yeah daredevil on netflix yeah oh yeah dude every single episode of daredevil was a 30 minute show and a 50 minute segment so it's like okay here's the story and here's him kicking ass and then there's a whole bunch of like a blind dude staring out the window (laughs) (laughs) and you're like <laughs> All right, can we fast forward a little bit? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the blind dude looking out the window. <laughs> it's, it's hilarious. But dude, that's a great show, though. I mean, I see what you're saying for sure. It's I mean, good if they were to have the extended cut that was like shorter. It's like wait, are you sorry? Are, here, here's, sorry here's the sorry. blind man version, right? Like here, here's the blind man version of me yeah. not staring out the window and just like kicking ass and then like turning my head and realizing that I'm blind and I'm not gonna go stare out the window. So then they can just cut scene and go to the next one. <laughs> because that drove me freaking nuts. <laughs> yeah, like the, 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 the the contracted version. Instead of the extended, like, <laughs> right? You were talking about the show, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I mean, needless to say, it's I don't know. I mean, some movies just have aged really well in that sense. Some have not. Yeah. I mean, you, you you can look at 
any slasher or whatever from the 80s and uh like i say that the lighting or whatever kind of worked in its favor other times it it didn't and i'm all for restoration and you know things like yeah. that and companies doing a, a great job and cleaning them up and, and whatnot but sometimes it's like i do feel like it can be cleaned up a little bit too much like yeah. it's it's a little bit too clean and it doesn't retain that raw pure value you know what i mean absolutely well, i think the, i that's, don't think there's ever going to be anything better than live music that's why you still hold on to the box sets of the original cuts no. Because they end up nice. going back. I mean, they always go back and do the stupid adding extra job of the yeah. hut crap in there that you don't yeah. need. And and it's yeah. fine to see one time, but this is what I want to watch. Right? Dude, you rock. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm I'm just so glad to own, like, take Star Wars, for example. I mean, we could be on that forever, but I'm so glad to own on VHS and DVD both the unaltered versions and the altered versions. We only right. have a few more minutes, but since you did that. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh man. Absolutely. But since I have box. this, I also have these. Absolutely. Oh man. <laughs> I, I need those. Those are classic original look and you can tell. Yep. Oh dude. Oh yeah. The. Yeah. Yep. yep. Got I wish I had those. Two different Empire Strikes Back. Yep. CBS Absolutely. Fox. <laughs> All right, we got about four minutes before we're going to get dumped. So, final thoughts. You got VHS, DVD, and streaming. I would say probably the superior format would be DVD because streaming <laughs> – that's when they decide to take stuff off of Netflix. Like, I love Futurama. <laughs> there ain't no Futurama. Right. You need to watch Futurama all the time. It's not there anymore. Yeah. So having the DVD where you can just pop in Futurama yeah. from, from music, CD, streaming drives me nuts. Yep. What's I, I usually – I uh... – I load my phone with all the music I want to listen to. So I don't use a Spotify or anything like that. So I've got, I don't know, 80 gig of music in my phone and it's all stuff I want to hear. <laughs> so I just push play and it could be minute work. One minute could be Elvis Costello. Could be Ingvay Malmsteen. Could be zebra. I mean, it's all over the place. Right. Um, <clears throat> So I, I'm kind of, and I'm I'm that way with movies too. I don't I don't have a pre preference. I think the 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 nostalgia of the videotape of popping it in and going through the trailers and all that stuff at the beginning and <laughs> your warnings and stuff gives you the good the feels right gets you in the feels. But I'm not going to be a fool and say, oh, that's superior to Blu-ray because it's not. <laughs> no, no, no. It's more fun or, or right. it looks better in certain circumstances. It's what we grew up with. I would never argue that it – well, no. I would argue that VHS does look better in certain circumstances. In certain senses, Because sure. they've, cleaned, they've, they've cleaned out all the stuff that made the movie look good to begin with. Right. Or, that's, some, that's somebody who was like a digital guy who's like tasked yeah. with just like cleaning stuff out and not actually paying attention to what it was supposed to look like. Or they go through and they take out all the guns out of people's hands and put CBs in their hands or some stupid thing like that, right? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I mean, you know, there, there's something to be said for both. You know, whether you're a collector or whatever. I mean, like you guys, I'm not going to sit here and say that VHS is superior. But if you're nostalgic, you're a collector, all the above. And, I mean, I've watched some VHS uh, in the past on surround sound and it sounded just as good, if not better than Blu-ray, like no kidding. Yeah. But there's something to be said for both. But, you know, on that point, like take a, a smart Blu-ray player that was, I don't know, like Sony, it just literally crapped out on me like a couple weeks ago and it's supposed to be smart and it wasn't, but a year <laughs> old. 
It wasn't but a year, a year old, and it crapped out on me. And it's supposed to be smart, you know, the, all the HDMI and crap. One year olds are pretty dumb. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, and, and I, I sat there with the wife, and I'm like, okay, this is what's got to go down. <laughs> I said, I I, I want an old school. If they even still sell it anymore, I want an old school DVD or Blu-ray player. Like, I don't want no smart HDMI, whatever. And Walmart doesn't even really sell them anymore. I, I found an old Phillips for, I don't know, I think 50, 60 bucks or whatever. Finally went and got it. But my point is, is that, you know, all these, that this new technology and it, it's supposed to be better. You know, it's supposed to be smarter. It's supposed to be more technical technologically advanced and at the end of the day it's really not you know you can go back to an old school dvd player or a dvd vcr combo what have you and it works so much better like all they're literally all they're trying to do is make money you know it even t even tvs like our, our roku went out and like i don't know a year or two if that like it, it was supposed to be top of the line roku a good brand and it crapped out. You know what I mean? It just, yeah. I don't know. It's crazy. <laughs> I got 40 year old DVD or VHS is right here. And I'm going to go see if this actually will record in my VHS DVD recorder because I have one of those. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Guys, we got nice. like, we got like 30 seconds before I'm going to get the warning signs. Love you. I don't know what's going to happen with the old other episode. I will talk with Rick <laughs> if I can't recover it. Good night, gentlemen. We will talk soon. It was an awesome episode. Cool. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Bye. Right. That was fun. Oh, yeah.